tuning in again and joining us here for another instance of Animals in the Bible. Cue the theme music. Thank you, Joshua. All right. Okay, any ideas? What, anybody got an idea of what we're going to do this week? It's not donkeys. An ant. We did the ants. It was the first one we did. We haven't had lions. That's a really good guess. No, it's not. It's not lions. It's not a tiger. I don't think. It's not a big fish. No, it's not. It is the caterpillar. And in Joel, we have, uh, it says that, in Joel 4, 1, 4, it says, That which the palmer worm hath left, hath the locust eaten. And that which the locust hath left, hath the canker worm eaten. And that which the canker worm hath left, hath the caterpillar eaten. Do you know what a palmer worm is? No. It's a type of caterpillar. Do you know what the canker worm is? It's a type of caterpillar. But do you know what the caterpillar here is referring to? Referring to? A type of caterpillar. Well done, that's right. <laughs> do you know what the locust is, though? Yeah. It's not a type of caterpillar. <laughs> okay, that's our word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, we come to you tonight. We thank you for your goodness and for your blessings. I pray you bless us as we look into the, your creation and help us to find out some facts about this caterpillar and the butterfly. And, and Lord, see great things that you have done and help us to uh, use these things to um, glorify you. And... Uh, just have the knowledge of these things in our heart to see your marvelous creation and what you have done. We thank you, Lord. We love you and pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so what do we have? Let's see what a caterpillar looks like. That's basically what everybody thinks is a caterpillar. And they would be right. That is, in fact, a caterpillar. So is this. Although it looks a bit like a warthog, um, that is the head of the caterpillar, not the nose of a warthog <laughs> or a Kind of pig. That's yeah, pretty cool. Then you've got uh, the mustache caterpillar here. If you take it off and stick it on your nose, it might look like that. All right. Uh, you've got one like this. That's pretty cool. And you get this little dude. He does look painful. That spikes he's got. So there are tons. There are about 180,000 different species of caterpillar. And every single one of them turns into a butterfly, a moth, or some other kind of flying insect of that variety. 180,000. Right? I don't know whose job it was to count them all, but uh, all the best on that one. Right? Some, of course, blend into their habitat, like the green ones. You find those on, on your cabbages and things like that, because it, look, they're green and they blend in. Um, sometimes hard to find. I did have one the other day that I captured, and I was actually going to use it tonight, but it got eaten by the slugs. Um, the caterpillar. The slugs ate the caterpillar. I didn't realize the slugs were carnivorous, but anyway. Either the caterpillar disintegrated or the slugs ate it, one of the two. So, anyway. No, it didn't fly away. No, no, no. So, I did look for a chrysalis to see if it was there, but it wasn't. So, and obviously some are very brightly colored, as we saw. There's some of them there that you just think, well, why are they so brightly colored? And only God really knows the answer for these things. But uh, some of them have got great camouflage. Some of them look like stones. Some of them look like twigs. And some of them look green. And some of them look like other insects. Some of them look like all kinds of things. All right. So they have eight pairs of legs. So how many legs do they have all together then? Sixteen. But uh, the first three of these legs are joined with hooks. All right. They've got hooks on these, these, these three. And these are going to be the ones that when they metamorphosis, they will become the butterfly's legs in this. So that will be the six legs that the butterfly then has, although the butterfly only really uses four of them. The other two are kind of beside, right? But the other legs that they have, they're not really legs as such. They're more, they, but they're used for helping them to climb. And we'll see that here in a minute. You can see here this, this uh, green caterpillar. Almost looks like some kind of space bus. Um, but here you see, you get the, the three legs and the six legs on the front, three on each side. And you can see the hooks here that are there. 
and then you have these ones here and you have this one at the back here all right so sometimes they have some uh, more than these it just depends on the caterpillar and um, so these are more like suction things and they use those to hang on and those are what is used to climb and these are the ones that kind of hook onto it so that's why you'll see it raise up and then it'll put forward with these hooks and then it'll come and then suck in with these things all right uh, there's all kinds of funky things and very very strong jaws here on the caterpillar they have six pairs of eyes that's a lot of a lot of eyes but they don't see images they see light so they, they detect light rather than images so they wouldn't see a clear they wouldn't see something as red or or things like that but they would see intensity so they would, could be able to figure out where they're going by the light and also they very much feel they their senses they touch um, through their antennae and also through the tiny hairs on their body so they can feel where they're going and, and what it feels like and so they can often tell a lettuce from a cabbage and things like that and you would think that caterpillar just eats anything but it doesn't how do you think a caterpillar breathes lungs but how through his nose through his mouth or some other way through his ears through holes in the body you're right through little holes on the side of their bodies not through their mouth did you study that you know? oh well good so you know this thing so you can you can do you can do the rest of it <laughs> they have strong jaws well done for knowing that all right how do bees hear that's something what you can we'll, we'll do bees that's something for you to look up all right bees where are bees ears no it's not <laughs> all right they have uh, the caterpillar has strong jaws called mandibles and they're just for chewing food so they don't breathe through it as jordan said they, drew, they breathe through holes in their bodies that way no. and a caterpillar can have as many as four thousand muscles in its body I was blown away by that fact tiny little caterpillar has somewhere around four thousand muscles anybody know how many muscles are in the human body a lot less than that 629 muscles in the human body yeah yeah I've never seen anybody be able to crawl like a caterpillar so you know but some of it's it's the caterpillar has almost as many muscles as we have in the human body in its head there are something like 300 muscles just in its head for controlling the the eyes and the antenna and all this and of course they're tiny little things and they're just almost single celled muscles but they are muscles that's they they do not single cell but they're controlled by by single cell here and they actually form muscles they're so so tiny and you have to think to yourself how does something like that evolve with 4,000 muscles you know how does that do that you know and, and where did we decide that we were going to lose 4,000 you know um, three three almost three and a half thousand muscles to just deal with what we have you know it's amazing to think that this is that you know so the life cycle anybody have a guess at the life cycle of a caterpillar what's the caterpillars uh, in the cycle of there's four stages of the caterpillar yes uh, egg larva yeah pupa butterfly well done All right egg larva pupa and adult which will be the butterfly well done now a caterpillar once it's transformed went from egg to butterfly and the rest of it can live somewhere between two weeks to sometimes a year and the reason why they can live for a year is because they will hibernate when the weather gets colder if it gets colder the butterfly will actually go and hibernate and then when it gets warmer it'll come back out just like our butterfly does in here that when it when it's really cold during the winter time and the place gets warm the butterfly thinks oh it's warm again and it comes back out and then when all the heating's off he finds a place to land and he folds himself up and and then when he gets warm again he comes he comes back you see so we can have that same butterfly going nuts for several several weeks and they can live way beyond their normal lifespan 
because of the hibernation. So a butterfly that could possibly only live a month could live up to six months by hibernation, depending on the climate and where he was. Right, I want you to watch this, this little video here. You know, I think you might just have to click on it, see if it works. Over onto the, onto there, there. That's it. <laughs> What does a caterpillar eat? Leaves. Green stuff. Leaves. Mostly. People say caterpillars will eat anything. That's what people say. But they don't. You, can you turn that light on again? They don't. Caterpillars are actually very picky. And there's some caterpillars that only live on one type of plant. Like this, the monarch butterfly that we just saw will only live, I think it's on the milkweed plant, it won't eat anything else. And there's toxins in that plant that it, uh, that it takes in its body. It doesn't hurt the caterpillar, but it prevents predators from eating them. Because the birds eat them and they think, oh, wait a minute, I can't eat that. Made me sick, you know, so they don't eat it. So the birds have just evidently realized that, that they don't eat monarch caterpillars. They don't eat them because they're poisonous to these things. Now, whether they figured that out because they saw Uncle Charlie eat one and die, and they thought, oh, well, pff, yeah, it must have been somebody ate. Yeah, don't eat those, you know, things. Or God built it into them that way to, to protect the birds as well. But this is, this is amazing. They do. They only live at one type of plant. So anybody guess what kind of caterpillar this turns into? These are British. What kind of butterfly? Yeah. What kind of butterfly? These are British ones. All right, well, look at all the spots. A spotted butterfly, you're close. It's a peacock butterfly. All right, you can turn off the light and so everybody can see it a bit better. There we go, right? Here's another one. What's this one? It's not a cabbage butterfly. It's another British one that we would see. Is it the white one? I don't 
It's not the white one. It is the Red Admiral. All right. Um, no, no. How about this one? What about this one? It's there's a couple kinds. There's there's a couple kinds of these kind of but um, butterfly that turns into similar butterflies. So you can see this one. What does it look like? It's on a cabbage. So it's a indeed. Okay. That's the white one. Also, the green one that we usually see, that will also turn into a cabbage butterfly of similar things. Okay? Then we come on to this one. All right? This is actually not a caterpillar because, I mean, this is a caterpillar. It's not a butterfly because butterflies are not hairy, but it is a moth. Right? It's your common moth that you get. Yeah. Really, really hairy. Okay, see, it becomes that, and that's what it. Which one? Yes, that's what that was basically. It's a moth, right? Then we have this one, and this is probably the most common. This one turns into this. You think, oh, that's pretty pants, until he opens his wings. Yep, that's what that's um, that's George. Look at that. When it comes to that, I forget the name. I forget the name. I'll get it after. Um, it is. Um, oh, it's gone. Can't think. Can't think what it what, what it is. Um, Yeah, I'll figure it out later. Not important, just now. Yeah, look it up. Common British butterfly, you'll find it. Um, I can't remember what it's called right now. The Bible says in Psalm 78, verse 46, He gave also their increase unto the caterpillar and their labor unto the locust. You see? And so, so, so we hear something, and you'll notice that caterpillar is spelled differently in the Bible. The old spelling of caterpillar rather than caterpillar. All right, which it made it really difficult to find it in the Bible because I was spelling. I'm like, yeah, caterpillars are in the Bible, and I was spelling it caterpillar. And then I looked at, I said, I know it's with the locust, and so I looked up locust, and there was caterpillar. I thought, oh, that's interesting. But what's interesting about the, the word that's translated caterpillar? And it comes from something. It comes from a word meaning to basically ravage and to um, eat a lot, and so that's what it does. And you will see in the Bible that that's it, tortoiseshell butterfly. Tortoiseshell. Tor tortoiseshell butterfly. Tortoiseshell. All right, the last one was a tortoiseshell. Um, and uh, we see in the Bible that caterpillars, the reference to caterpillars is always in devouring things because they eat so much of certain things. And some caterpillars will eat, you know, the plants. Some will only eat one type of plant. And, um, and so we see again in Isaiah th 33, verse 4, and your spoil shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. And as the running to and fro of locusts shall he run upon them. So yet again, we see this thing that the caterpillars are coming on. Uh, God is sending the caterpillars. It is in destruction to take away their reliance on food. And in the, in the, the verse that we left, uh, we started with, Joel 1, 4, that which the palmer one, a type of caterpillar, hath left, hath the locust eaten. So things that the, the palmer worm won't eat what the locust eats <clears throat> the locust won't eat what the canker worm eats and the canker worm doesn't eat what the caterpillar eats so god selling these sending the four, these four different types of of insect uh to devour the crops because they'll all eat different things and uh, the locust is something incredible um when you see it and they can eat so much they can eat up to their own body weight and food each day and so when you think of millions of them, for example, the last big swarm that had was about the size of New York State. But they ate the equivalent of what all the people in New York and New Jersey and Pennsylvania would eat in one day. That's the equivalent of food 
that these locusts ate. Now people ask, say, what's the difference between a grasshopper and a locust? Well, the difference is basically that grasshopper is just bouncing along doing normal things. There, and there are some subtle differences. But a grasshopper becomes a locust when it goes into a swarming stage. And it starts to swarm when it feels overcrowded. You can make a grasshopper go into a locust stage by rubbing its legs every minute for four hours. Why you would do this, I don't know. But there are little men that sit there. No, it's not from experience. No, it's not from experience. No, I would have one of the kids do it. Um, so here, rub this grasshopper every minute for four hours. That'll keep you busy. Right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, but this one guy he did he's on the video and he rubs it for four hours and it, and it, and it does it then metamorphosizes into a locust it changes from the green into the yellow and it um, it then develops the the swarming it's there's a, something triggers the serotonin kicks in and it triggers the swarming stage and so it goes from the peaceful happy grasshopper loner into this swarming devouring locust in this way and that's what uh, what they, they turn into in that way and then sometimes they will swarm so big that swarms can be 400 miles wide and when they come upon there's nothing you can do to save your crops so what they've actually done is they've, they've um, discovered that there's a, a fungus that will kill them and it's a natural occurring fungus so they spray the dry fungus over these areas and when it attaches to the grasshopper and to the locust it then Gets it penetrates the locust and it, and it kills them naturally. Uh, obviously, you can't then you can't eat the locust after that, but people do eat them. But see here that the, the, all these different kinds of caterpillars, God has sent them upon judgment, you know. But then you take the butterfly that doesn't eat very much at all. It goes from a devouring creature that will devour whatever it eats. It will devour it and eat and eat and eat. That's what the caterpillar's job is to do is to eat. It has no other job than to eat. And it just eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats and eats until it's time to change into butterfly. But once it turns into butterfly, it eats very little because now its job is not to eat, but to get nectar. And it goes and gets nectar and it carries nectar from plant to plant just like the bees do and it helps in pollination. So you can see that almost a complete contrast with this caterpillar. You can see its first thing is a, 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 an animal, an insect of destruction. But then the second part of its life, or the latter part of its life, if you like, the fourth part, is involved in reproduction, in the production of new life. Because not only does it lay eggs, it helps transfer pollen from things to things. It's, it's got a little stamen thing that it, it pokes into the... The, um, the flower and, uh, and soaks up the things in there. And of course the, the pollen and that gets on it and, it and it transfers the pollen from plant to plant and helps fertilize all these things just like the bee does. So it's an amazing little creature and you think it almost, it almost sounds like the Christian life. That the first part of your life you're just consuming everything that the world has to offer. And then at some point you go through this transformation and now, your job is not to consume the worldly things, but to help in the reproduction and carrying the gospel from place to place in that way. And also, to now lay eggs, if you like, for more people, to, um, to, for gospel seeds, if you like. But it's, it's just the, the thing to think, and I always try and ask evolutionists, how do you explain metamorphosis? How does a caterpillar suddenly decide, I am sick of crawling on this cabbage, I want to be a butterfly. Where did that come from? A tadpole into a frog, caterpillar into a butterfly. Where do these things come from? How does evolution have any answers for that? Because the, the DNA has to be in that tadpole for the frog or for the toad. The DNA for the butterfly has to be in that caterpillar. But yet the DNA is there, but the caterpillar doesn't turn out like a butterfly until it's gone through metamorphosis. It's an amazing thing God has just done to confound the wise. Because there's no way that something like that can just evolve. 
It has to be planned. It, the whole part has to be planned from the egg to the, to the larva, to the pupa, to the butterfly. It has to be planned in all these, these ways for the metamorphosis to take place. And it's just another example of God's great creation and putting something so sim simple as the, as the caterpillar and the butterfly on, on the earth to, to be able to do it. And then the question we ask is, okay, did God create two caterpillars or did he create two butterflies? Which did he do? We can't really answer that question because either way is possible. God created, created them as a creeping thing or a flying creeping thing. But either way, it's possible. So maybe the first butterflies didn't actually have a chrysalis. That's something to think about. Maybe they just went and laid eggs and reproduced that way. Or maybe God did create the caterpillar as it is and then it went through the stages of life. Who knows? Maybe something to ask him. Did God create frogs or toads? Or did he create tadpoles? Hmm. No, you don't. But these are things, there's interesting things. But again, it's the, qu the question you have to ask evolutionists. You know, how did the caterpillar evolve? So did you have a butterfly that led eggs? And then they became caterpillars? And every animal that goes through this stage, whether it's flies, they're maggots. You know, they go through the eggs to the maggot, then into the fly. Beetles do the same thing. Um, all these different kinds of things. Any form of beetle does the same thing. It starts off as that. But you have to say, so how did that evolve? How did that process evolve? Because no mammal really goes through metamorphosis. It's born live and it grows. It goes through changes, yes, but it doesn't go into a chrysalis and come out with something else. It's amazing what God has created. And we give him all praise and glory to him. Gracious Heavenly Father, again, as we come to you, do we thank you, Lord, for your goodness, for creating these things that we can look into and see your great creation. I pray you'd help those that watch this to, to study more on the things that you've done, that we may help those that are stranded in evolution, stuck in evolutionary teaching, to see the great creation that you have made. Lord, I pray that many would come to realization through our videos and, and through studying the things that you have made. Lord, be with us and bless us. Now, again, we thank you for each one here tonight and those that are watching. And be with us now in Jesus' name for his sake. Amen and amen.